Hey everyone, apologies for those delays. Uh, we're here. Um, we'd like to welcome everyone to Access Success. Uh, this is our webinar, uh, series of webinars we'll be doing uh, for sellers by sellers uh, in relation to unified communications. So um, thank you for everyone for jumping on and, and for enduring those technical delays. You've got to love a live webinar, they're always the best. Uh, so to thank you for your time today, uh, we're going to give everyone who was on the webinar at the end a Uber Eats voucher for $25 as a bit of a gratitude. Normally, we would do these in person, live, but obviously, due to uh, current events, we're unable to do that. So we still want to make sure you guys have a bite with us. But you do need to be at the end. We do know we're a little bit um, running with time, so we will be a bit quicker today to keep you within the hour. So my name is Peter Elm. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing. Uh, at Access4, and joining me today is Daniel Pritchard. Daniel is a frontline seller. He's a sales manager for Delta Office Solutions. So welcome, uh, Daniel, and thank you for being part of us. This is a great time for you to give yourself a bit of a pitch. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, sure. All right. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for having me on, Peter. Um, uh, look, I'm the sales manager at Delta Office Solutions. We're an SP up in Townsville. Um, traditionally, we were a, a photocopier sales and service <clears throat> company, um, but we've uh, diversified our portfolio or our stack um, because, uh, well, to be honest, print's on the decline. And if we're not um, evolving and changing in today's environment, then we won't be here in the future. So, yeah, we've um, uh, brought on IT, a um, stack of offerings in the IT space and um, the telco option as well, which um, is starting to gather quite a bit of steam, which is good. Brilliant. So, um, uh, Daniel, I'll just actually you move your mic just a little bit closer, you're just a little bit light on that. And yep, yep, rest, okay. That's much better. For the rest of this, I'm able to call you Dan. Should we, are we going to do it less formal? Yeah, yeah, sure, that's fine. <laughs> Brilliant. It's usually, it's only Daniel if you're in trouble with your mum, right? <laughs> yeah, or my wife, yeah. <laughs> yep. So, um, as I said, th this webinar is for sellers. So everything we're going to talk about today is, is from a seller standpoint. And, and cards on the table, that's very much what I am. All my life, I've carried a target and I've been in my own business, or, or which I was as an MSP, or working for various others. Um, it's always been with a sales and customer focus, uh, service focus. <coughs> so excuse me. So a little bit about access for from the point of view of a, of a seller. So we're, we're channel only. So you're not going to come across us out in the market um, trying to compete against you. We, we only grow when our partners grow, when our sellers grow. Um, you know, we're Australian, we're Australian owned U, uh, UCAS business, so Unified Communications as a Service. We were purely building the cloud. So, you know, you're going to have less customer service issues because we're not trying to fix a on-prem solution and make it in the cloud. It was born there. Further to that support, it's all out of Australia. So these are our staff um, working with, with your technical people to solve your customers' problems. And we've got over 200 partners. Um, so there are a lot of our partners out there talking to customers about these solutions. And I would say get out there and have a chat with yours before another one does. So very quickly, what is Unified Communications? Look, Unified Communications is a collection of technologies. And that covers voice, video, chat, instant messaging, pleasant, uh, presence and, uh, and accountability applications, and collaboration tools. And they're all brought into a central location. And I don't mean a physical central location, I mean a device. So be it a PC or a laptop, which means that we're bringing them all in together. And, and what it more importantly does is it allows you to use that device and all, all those communications as tools wherever you are. So you uncouple you away from that office. And again, what some people don't realize is this is internal and external conversations. So this isn't just, um, you know, having chats on Teams with your, your staff. This is having, you know, extension numbers and, and, and dial-ins and call routing and all those things you'd expect in an enterprise phone system, having that wherever you are, whatever device you are using. And this is very much the modern workplace. And we'll talk a little bit about that now, and, and, and we'll talk about why it's a modern workplace. So, to start off, we're going to have a quick history lesson. So, I don't know if you guys remember these things, but there was a thing called an office. And workers, staff, used to go to offices. Now, you might want to ask your grandparents about this. It was a little while ago. 
But, you know, we, we would all go to an office and because of that, we'd put all our in, uh, critical infrastructure into that office. So our servers would put in there, our enterprise phone systems, we'd put support staff to actually support all our teams when customers called in. And then we would give all our teams important tools like, you know, um, spreadsheets and the likes to be able to work together um, to meet our customers' needs and, and be profitable. And that was great. That worked really, really well. And then one day, this, this guy turned up, right? COVID hit. And then literally overnight, we all had a major problem. We had a workforce who was stuck at home, and we had all our critical equipment and, and, and collaboration tools in an office. And that made major impacts on the businesses and, and MSPs and CSPs. You guys out there did an incredible job in fixing those problems for them in the short term. But the reality is, is what we're seeing is that this isn't just a short term problem. So what we've done in UCAS and, and the solutions that we provide, we've solved this problem no matter what the event. So by moving these services uh, into a cloud based offering, it doesn't matter where those, uh, where those customers are. I mean, we can be at home, they can be at an office, they can be on a beach. It doesn't matter. And more importantly, it doesn't matter the event. It could be viral. Um, as we're seeing now, if we're still going through COVID, it could be virtual through a malware attack, or it could be a physical event by a fire or flood or whatever it is. By moving those systems into the cloud, we then mean that we're uncoupling the business from the risk of that office. Then more importantly, we take those individual separate tools, spreadsheets, phones, video conferencing, and we combine them as one to really deliver that collabor collaborative tools and mean that they're flexible to move wherever they are. And when we look at what's out there, we're seeing that this is absolutely everywhere. You're just gonna pick up a newspaper or see an article about not only the effect of COVID and, and the effect of people having to work from home, but more importantly, what's gonna happen post COVID. So the, the fundamental change in how we work and, and the positives that can come out around that, around hiring of quality staff, no matter where they are, and the efficiencies and, and the environmental benefits we get as well by not having to jump on a plane to go and have a 15 minute meeting with someone. And so there's a ton of information here and we can provide this, this information to you guys that helps seed this to your customers to explain to them that, that you see solves the problems that they're currently uh, experiencing. But let's have a talk about what's in it for you guys as the sellers or what's in it for us because we're all in there selling. So UC does a number of things for sellers. So the first one is it, it's a hot topic for your customers. And as we saw there, as we'll talk a little bit more about why it's so important to customers. Secondly, UCAS conversations are consultative conversations. So if you are having a conversation about solving these problems, you're elevating yourself out of a conversation about licensing or who has the cheapest bill. UCAS makes your customers stickier and happier. And that's really powerful as a, as a customer or, or as, a, as a seller. If I can sell something and in that process make my customer stickier and happier, then that's a triple win for me. And we'll talk about why that is. And then really importantly for everyone on the call, UCAS helps us deliver monthly recurring revenue. And more importantly, it delivers more profitable and it pulls us out of the weeds where we're adding value and it's hard to compare to just a straight Old, old phone bill comparison, and we'll talk about, about that in a minute. So let's go through these one at a time. You know, why does you why is UCAS a hot topic for customers? Well, as we just saw there about what's happening out around the world, is customers are seeing now that their workforce is more displaced and it's more mobile, it's more remote, and that causes issues for them. We're seeing more and more meetings that are going online, something like this you know, the, the boy for the 15 minute meeting. We're seeing that customer experience is linked to staff uh, or to staff experience. And what I mean there is, is that as we get displaced, if your customer, your staff are feeling siloed and not really feeling part of a team, probably your customers are as well, if they're having trouble communicating and getting hold of people. And then finally, we're seeing a wave of millennials are coming through who understand what technology is there and they want to have these tools. And then I'll bring you in now, mate. What, um, what are you seeing with your customers around this? I mean, are you seeing them um, 
knowing these problems that they're having? Um, you know, what happened around COVID for you guys and, and what did you do to try and solve some of these problems? Uh, we were a little bit lucky where I am up north in, in Townsville. Um, the We didn't really have a massive COVID impact, but we did have the initial scare and it scattered our customers away from the workplace, uh, the centralised workplace uh, to working from home. Um, and uh, yeah, look, it, it definitely became the topic of conversation. You know, how do we operate our business from home? Um, and the initial um, place that people went were um, apps like Teams and Zoom um, and, and for all their collaboration um, and their, their videos, um, their content sharing, all of that sort of stuff. So having a, um, a, a UCAS product that unified all of that um, was a really, really important um, tool to have it under our belt. Um, and, you know, we've also got up here um, once a year, um, lately at least, we, we get the cyclone season come by. Yes. Um, and, you know, the the big topic um, for my customers is, um, and, you know, these are uh, non-profit organisations, some of them who help um, people who are in need or uh, disabled people, that sort of thing. Um, so for them, when, when a disaster strikes, that is a critical time when they need to be available, but it's also a time when they may not be able to get to the office. So having that option for mobility and, and um, remote work was really, really important for them as well. Yeah, that's, that's a really, really good point. I was involved in a, with a cyclone up the with Sundays there. Yeah. And, you know, that, that, you know, everyone thinks about data as being that, that business continuity component, but most businesses, if you ask them, you can either have voice or data, they'll, they'll take voice. Like that's, that's, that's a life yeah. for their business. So look yeah, at these, yeah. other, these other areas as well. You know, we see that, and these are good stats to be able to use. You know, 65% of the workplace is now um, uh, distributed and mobile compared to where it used to be. Um, you know, 63% of professionals are spending at least two hours a day. I would I would very happily take two hours a day on online meetings. There's, there's a fair few more of them. And, and, and there's a big one as well around um, recruitment. So 75% um, of the workforce will be millennial by 2025. And the way that millennials are consuming um, a technology is very different. And we've seen some surveys that have came out around, um, ASEAN did a survey recently that said, um, employees, 46% of them would be willing to move jobs for a work from home or a flexible working environment. And in millennials, that was over 50%. And so in a tight working environment, um, being able to make sure you're offering these type of uh, flexible so solutions, but while in the meantime making sure that the staff are doing the right thing is really critical. So then the next one we talk about is UCAS conversations are consultative conversations. And so this is some surveys that was done of end customers to find out what was keeping them up at night. And what's really good about this type of stuff is that if you phrase this as a question, you're very much talking about the things that are on their mind and then really bring it into solution style selling. So, you know, one of the areas of complaint concern about is low employee productivity and engagement. So a good way to ask that is to turn around and go, you know, did you see a drop down in, in productivity over COVID? Are you concerned about employee uh, um, disconnection if they're working from home? You know, these are good questions to ask your partners or your end customers, again, leading into you know, that segmentation of silos between sales and marketing and operations, the more we spread out as, a, as businesses, then the risk is the more we become siloed in how we look. So again, you know, these three, if we're talking to our end customers and we say, you know, do are you worried about um, silos within your business, business and a lack of collaboration if staff, the staff are working from home or remotely? These are the type of things that will then lead forward into a UCAS conversation about how you solve these problems. Then when we look on the other side around customer um, satisfaction, there's a real concern around um, brand reputation and customer satisfaction through poor communication. Because what we saw was businesses very quickly pivoted to work remotely um, because of, of what was happening, but you know what was what we all thought was very soon would return to the office. 
And so there was a bit of piecemeal solutions around forwarding mob, um, uh, main numbers to mobiles. And what we're seeing now is that's delivering a really poor customer um, engagement and, and, and experience. And so with UC, we can talk about being able to deliver enterprise grade phone system um, features in a, in a combined solution, you know, via Teams or WebEx or whatever it is, no matter where their staff are. Um, Dan, what did you see around this? What conversations are you having around UC to, to get out of the weeds of how much their phone bill is and start talking about, you know, the benefits and the opportunity around UC? Um, I don't ask how much their current phone bill is. I think that's a trap because you're immediately um, you know, framing your conversation as a selling conversation. And as you say, we want to be consultative. Um, I think uh, talking about productivity and engagement, all these points on here are really, really important, but also ask the customer, have they measured what that cost is? How, how is that impacting them? Um, because what you want to um, essentially do is let's, let's say for argument's sake, you know, the phone bill is about $500. What you want to do is add cost onto that. You want to find out from them all these uh, pain points and what the cost is for that. And suddenly you go from a $500 phone bill to an $800 a month um, bleed or cost in total. Um, and then and then your the floor is open to you to provide a solution. Um, and and that's, so, a, that's a brilliant method, right? So so it's you know it, you can look at a phone bill and you know as you said $500 down. But if you if you ask a customer like what's a customer worth to you? What's your average spend? Oh, well, when we bring a guy in, they spend $2,000 with us on average. Well, what happens if that guy or girl gets lost in coal routing hell because you've all had to work from home uh, for a particular reason and they give up and go to your opposition who has got a decent, a decent gas solution. Yeah, you know, and you can run the numbers in front of them. Bill. Sorry, Togo, uh, Peter, you can run the numbers in front of them, ask them, um, that question, what's, uh, what's the sale worth? Let's say it's a $2,000 sale. Um, what's your close rate if it's 25% and then how many calls do you think are getting lost per month? If it's a hundred, you've lost 25 calls at two grand each. Um, suddenly you're looking at, um, oh, geez, I've lost the math, 50, 50 grand worth of sales. If it's 25 calls, yeah. two grand. And so powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the numbers are not likely to necessarily be that obviously large, um, but it, they don't need to be. No, I mean, the flip side as well, right? Because there's, there's two ends of that funnel. So there's, there's the, the there's customers they lose, but there's also the staff as well. So if you get into that displaced work, working environment and you've got less visibility of your staff and a couple of them are, pardon the pun, following it in, then, you know, what's that productivity loss? How much are you charging? How much of that staff worth to you from an overall cost? And, you know, if it takes you a month to realize a couple of them are, 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 are fading out, then that's a significant impact on the business as well. Yep, definitely. Yeah, so, so really, you know, these are really good questions to be asking around, and we'll get into it a little bit later about some good, good um, qualifying questions to ask. But, you know, these conversations, because it's in the front of their mind, that, you know, no one's going to say to you, oh, thank goodness, Dan, you've turned up to talk about UCAS, right? Like, that, we're not going to say that. But when you ask these questions, what we find out is the problems that we're solving is the problems that they have. So the next one, which is um, UCAS will make your customers stickier and happier. So you will deliver a better experience than those crusty telcos. That, that's, that, is, that is not the most um, uh, daft statement I will make today, right? You guys, are, are, as a small, organized or medium business, who are focused on being a trusted advisor and providing multiple services are going to do a better job than not those bigger telcos. And so, you know, automatically by having that, you're already giving them a better service. By managing their UC, you also have more control over potential issues. And there's nothing worse than as being a provider, you know, you might be selling a team's license and you're getting grief because of phones or, or for another reason, because they're ringing you first, because you're the trusted advisor and you're not taking a clip on that and you're still getting the grief. So by consolidating their needs, not only do they get a better experience, but you come out of that in, in a better light with them as well. And then this is one that I always really liked when I, when I had my own business, which is the more agreements I have with a customer, 
particularly when they have different ending time frames, then the stickier that customer is with me. Because if I or one of my staff then did something silly to annoy that partner, I had a chance to go back there and, and fix it up because there was a lot of a lot of entanglement between the two businesses. And, and I'd further go and take, take a step as well is, you know, because this is so front of mind for customers, because this is the problems that they have you see solves, then I'd argue that if you're not talking to your partner or customer about you see, someone will, someone will come along and try and solve these problems. And so it's not just about the revenue opportunities, but it's also about ring fencing your customers as well and making sure that you're protecting them from what's out there from the competition. Um, Dan, what have you seen there around when you've brought those customers in comparing it to that old, you know, um, old traditional PABX and, 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 and telcos? How has that flexibility allowed you to, to actually elevate your, uh, your customer service levels with them? Um, being able to, the second point in that list, um, being able to have control of the customer experience and provide uh, a much higher level of support from a local uh, perspective, from our own support staff, that, that was a massive selling point. Um, I don't know anybody who, uh, well, I mean, I haven't come across anybody yet who's been happy with the uh, either of the two main uh, telco providers. Um, and a big part of that is that they, um, they, they can't get the support they need. Um, and, you know, for a little while there, we, we were a reseller for one of those telcos and every customer we signed up essentially was handed over to them to, for support, but we were stuck in the middle because the customer mm. signed up with us, but every time they had a support issue, it had to be rerouted through the provider. Um, so that, uh, caused a lot of frustration for us and our customers. And so that is, um, yeah, one of the, the biggest points that we leverage, um, being able to have that local support and then the onshore. Um, you know, level two support as well. Um, yeah, and I totally agree with your point about um, having as many agreements in place as possible to keep customers sticky. Absolutely. Yeah, brilliant. And then this final one really feeds back against what we're talking about telcos is the parting's hard, right? So bringing customers in is hard. Now we know that because we spend a ton of time and we've built technologies and we have a whole team to make sure that you guys don't feel that pain. But, you know, telcos, I'd argue that, you know, I think it's hard for a reason, right? They, they don't want people leaving. And so what we've done is really put a lot of time in making sure that when you bring a customer in, it's a smooth experience. But for all those reasons, they didn't want to move in the first place. Once you get them in and you're providing a far better customer service than they're getting, then you really protect not only the voice, but you're protecting your managed services agreements your AV license agreements, your, your team's licensing, it all comes in as part of that bundle. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a powerful environment where, you know, you can sell something to, to your current customer, so you don't have to find any more. You can, when you do that, they'll be happier and stickier in the process. That, that's really powerful. And then the one for sellers that we, you know, we're, we're all carrying numbers, we all have targets to hit is UCAS helps deliver monthly recurring revenue. And m more importantly, it delivers it uh, profitably, so you can, get, you can get higher numbers on it, and it takes you out of the weeds. So you see conversations changes from being about saving money, as you said, Dan, to being about staff productivity, better customer experience, communications continuity. So everything that Dan said, which, which I, I love the fact that you're, you're seeing that um, that continuity play has been really important. You know, we I think we've all we're all sick of hearing about unprecedented times, right? Like like yep. every fifteen minutes there's an unprecedented event. Like the ocean was on fire a couple of weeks ago. That's that's not <laughs> ideal. So so continuity is really important to businesses. And we, we you know if you go back two years ago that might have been a harder conversation. But after the disruption we're seeing and the constant um, change in, in, in working habits, people are very much willing to have that conversation. You know, I think the reality is right now, the only constant we have is change. And so, Dan, you spoke about that just a, a couple of minutes ago, but I don't know if you've got any more comments around how, you know, if, if you, if, if particularly if you, you're going into a place and they go, give me a quote on a phone system. I mean, if you go in 
with a UC solution that's, you know, not everyone in the market's trying to do and it, it needs a little bit of solution selling. How does that differentiate yourself and how does that change how you're seen in that quote? Uh, it, it's difficult to go in if the customers um, presented you with the, or, or asked you, I need a price, just give me a price. Um, you're already not in the right place. You're in a selling position, so you need to turn the conversation around or qualify the customer out or you're wasting your time. Um, and the it, it really depends on the customer, but try try to get them to talk about um, you know why you're looking to change. You know what 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 is it about your current system that has you looking, um, and that opens the door to them to start talking about those pain points, um, and then you can flip the conversation to productivity, customer experience, continuity, those points you got there. Um, but if if the customer's fixated on a price point, um, you don't really want to be in that um, in that opportunity to be to be frank, or I don't. No. Um, and um, I've mentioned to you previously, Peter, the every customer that I've signed up in the last uh, nine months has increased their telco spend by 20 to 30 um, percent with each opportunity. It's it's never come down to I mean, you've got to be reasonable and competitive, um, but there's, there's room there um, to to make margin and look after your customer. Um, Cause, to get cause that people will bet what people will pay for the value they see. That's right. Yeah. Right. And so if, if you if they go in and, and all you're doing is providing a quote on a phone system or even even a host of PABX or, or, or SIP lines is a really good example, right? Like it, there's no there's very little ability for you to add value there. Yeah. Whereas as as we've been talking about and as you just said, um, if, if we can go in and reframe that conversation and start, okay, let's take a step back. Let's talk about what pain points you have. Are you worried about this? What about redundancy? How are you working with your staff? And start solving those problems. Then again, it's that consultative sell. Suddenly, you've elevated yourself from, you know, why? Why did the other guy just want to throw me a quote? Why aren't they asking me these problems? How are they? Uh, do they care about my business? Are they invested? You know, do they want to bring me on a journey, or do they just want to sell me a phone system? And yep. so, I think you're, you're right. Like, if you know, you're certainly not charging. You know, you're charging more because you're providing more in that, Correct. and a, yep. and a whole holistic and end customers. They don't really care, right? They they don't really want to know about their phone systems, right? They just want to have productive systems that work, and they know they can go to someone if it's not working. And most businesses are very happy to pay, um, you know, particularly on a per user basis, which is another really powerful part of this. There's no yep. big capex changes every three years when you know they're banging the door. I remember my business when the phone guy turned up. I'm like, weren't you just here? If a few months ago, that was two years ago. We're, we're going to do it all again. Yep, yep. So that's so right. What we're they don't have time for that. They're running a business. Sorry, mate. They're trying to run a business. They don't have time for that. Mate, absolutely. Uh, but but uh, you're 100 percent right. And so what we're saying here is that if we can talk about these types of conversations, we we able to deliver increased margin and revenue, which which again, as sellers, that's what we're very much about. So. We talked about the opportunity around um, UCAS, and we're talking about um, uh, some of the, co the the conversations. But you know, we understand that as sellers, you guys have got a, a ton of products that you guys have got to sell, and so it's hard to be the expert on this stuff. And that's where Access Four can help you on this because Access Four is very much your partner around UC, and we want to help you guys not only learn the products, but we want to help you sell those products as well. So we have a, a slate of things that we can help on that. Uh, you know, for starters, the technology is award-winning, and it's very much self-provisioning and 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 self-managed. And so you can give customers the power of controlling their own arms and changes and the likes, which which customers love. We give you testimonials, and we have marketing teams who are very much channel marketing teams who want to work with you as sellers to get this message out to your customer, and then help you with selling that. We've got thought leadership pieces. Um, we have um, our, our partner journeys, and more importantly, we have things like this. So I very much love to do this type of presentation, but end user focused. And so, you know, we're very keen to work with you guys as sellers and as businesses to talk about being ambassadors for UC. So not going in there and pitching access for as a business and talking about features and benefits, but talking more about the why. So why should they be looking at unified communications? What are the problems that we can help solve them? And then off the back of that, if you as sellers 
have already got that platform to come in and start talking about you know hosting PABX or Teams calling or WebEx calling or whatever it is to solve their problems. So you know if you take anything out of this webinar, other than your twenty five dollar for Uber's voucher, what I recommend is find out who your trusted neighborhood access for account management is. Um, hopefully you already know that and make them your best friend because those account managers are there to help you sell. We'll do calls with you, we'll do events with you, we'll do training, whatever it is to put you guys in a position to be able to sell these services. So on that, we've talked about, again, the opportunity and, and what it's in front of mind. We've talked about making it solution selling, but let, let's look at how what you can do to help qualify and spot an opportunity. And so these are some questions that we've put forward to help you uh, once you start getting some interest in it, just try and go through that bant so that, you know, budget, authority, need, and timeline to make sure you've got enough information to be able to start looking at if there's an opportunity. So the first one to ask is, you know, is the business thinking of an inducing, uh, introducing a flexible working environment? You know, I think most businesses today are. I mean, if you're, you know, you're a mechanic, a little bit difficult. I get that, right? But most... Most of us out here are probably selling professional services. That's kind of what we do. And so those guys are very much in a position to do that. If they say, no, they haven't thought of it, ask them why not? Maybe give them some suggestions about some of the stuff around recruitment and the likes to try and get that conversation going. Um, another one is, you know, how did COVID affect your ability to communicate effectively with your staff, but more importantly, your customers? Again, these are thinking questions, right? We wanted to sit there and go, oh, you know what, I hadn't thought about that, but we, yeah, you're right, you know, we weren't very good at that. What, what can we do moving forward? These guys are tied up in a business. They're working, on a, or they're working in a business. You are the trusted advisor. And so by coming in and asking these questions, again, it, it elevates you and it, and it makes you a thought leader and get them to think about these type of ways they can make their business better. Do you currently have workers remotely? And do you do you feel that they're integrated into the business? So, and that's another good one. Everyone's got people all over the place. Uh, ironically, I think COVID has got us all better at working in, with all those remote people because I used to be a remote worker and, you know, you're always kind of forgot about the, everyone would stand around uh, the office and go, oh, by the way, we're, we're going to do this promotion. And, you know, I wouldn't hear about it because no one bothered to tell me. But now because of COVID, it's forced us to be a little bit more communicative in, in how we work and use things like Teams or Slack or whatever it is to start talking to each other. So that's an area that, you know, there's a positivity that's came out of that. And then in, into a few more better qualifications, right? Is, is your phone system on site? Do you buy it in the CapEx? Now we're starting to think about how we're going to position our proposal on how it's going to look better against the other ones. You know, we don't want you having these boom and bust purchasing cycling cycles. You know, Mr. Customer, if you could just pay per user per month, would that be a better better scenario for you? There's, there's not many who's going to say no to that. Um, and then again, what, what tools are you currently using for audio conferencing, video conferencing, instant messaging? You know, you, what you'll see is if guys are already using Teams, for instance, there's a puppy dog sale. It's already in there. They're already starting to use that interface. Now you can start setting up and one of the benefits around Access 4 is we give you the ability to have multiple products in there. So you can have Zoom for video conferencing, you can have Teams calling for some small users, and then you've got a full enhanced Broadsoft suite for those um, executive users who really don't need call centers or whatever it is. So a really flexible solution that's been designed to your customer's need. And then finally, would you like me to review your phone bill and provide a unified communications option? And exactly what Dan said there, never say, give us your phone bill, I'll try and save you some money. Dan, is there any other on there that I've missed or is there anything that you guys use in that qualification conversation? Um, I, I think uh, more to the point I made earlier about asking customers to, to qualify or quantify what those um, impacts um, that they might be experiencing, what, what that is to them in a dollar value. So the 
um, what's a sale worth if you miss a phone call, that sort of thing. And that again comes back to positioning yourself when you um, ask, um, do you purchase in a CapEx model or an OPEX? Um, so it just, it helps you understand where you need to frame and what problems you need to solve. Um, and, you know, it's all about when we're selling and we want to make uh, good revenue and good margin, but it is also about providing solutions for the customer because you want, like you say, we want sticky customers. We want them to go, actually, you know what? Um, Delta, in my case, help me out. I don't want to go anywhere else. And, and I don't and feel like I'm ripped off. I understand why it's more expensive than what I paid. And, and that's that's absolutely a critical point, right? This isn't about trying to just make money, right? It, it's about solving problems. And, I, and I'm very honest with my customers about that is like, you know, I, I'm in business to make money, right? However, the way I make money is by servicing you very, very well so that you want to you engage with me. And that's an honest transaction, right? Is, is that that's what we do is we solve problems and, you know, just because a customer thinks they want something cheaper doesn't mean that's the best thing for them. And that's our jobs as trusted advisors is to communicate the benefits of, of a UC solution or, or whatever it is to get them out of that. So people generally only want to pay less if they don't see value. Yep, yeah, exactly yeah, right. Very, very good point, Stan. So, so we've spoken about, we've spoken about um, what the opportunity is. We've talked about how to change the conversation into being consultative. Now we've got some questions we're going to ask to help qualify. The next little step in the, in the journey is how do we find customers to go and talk to about this? So the first one I would say is clearly go back and see your current customers. And that's what I love about UC and particularly the managed service providers. So you as a managed service provider probably haven't done a whole heap in voice. And so you've got all these wonderful customers who love what you guys are doing around your managed services and being a trusted advisor or through managed print or whatever it is or services you provide. Going back to them and being able to provide another service which is better than they're getting currently but isn't one you're already billing is super powerful. But let's talk about if we want to use UCAS as, a, as, a, as an entry into a conversation into a new customer or we want to find a new ones. And so these tips we're going to talk about today about um, lead generation, I'm going to break it down to, to micro. So, so grassroots, something a seller can do today. So not like, you know, how do you find leads? Get a, get a $5 million marketing team. Okay, great. That, that's not really helpful to me, right? Let's talk about what salespeople can do today with a little bit of work, I can bring in leads tomorrow. And the first one is word of mouth, right? If I, when I talk to most MSPs and CSPs, most of their business comes from word of mouth. And so what about, do we, have we formalized that? Do you have a referral program? So, and, and most of the people go, yeah, we do. And so is it formalized? Oh no, we, we kind of give people something if they recommend it. But the problem with that is it's, it's, it's passive, it's post the event. So they've already recommended you, know, you give them a bottle of wine or you send them something, which is great, you should do that. But if you want to actively use it to create leads, then formalize it, build it out, build out a formal referral program with clear benefits and get it out to your customer. And I would argue, go big, right? If you work out what your average customer is worth to you as a, as a managed services agreement or as a UCAS agreement or whatever it is, then I, I always like to look at, you know, give close to that first month to the referrer. And you could do that in a way of, let's say you've got a, um, a customer who, who's, you've got a managed services agreement that's, you know, $1,500 a month. If they refer you a business that's worth another $1,500 a month, why not give them a month free? Because if I walked up to you today and said, hey, listen, you know, your average, um, you know, MSA, you know, you have them for five years, right? And, and 15, so if I could give you $1,500 for the next five years, would you give me $1,500 for that trouble? 99.9% .9 of the people would say, absolutely, I'll do that. So why not look at that from a referral? So if you have a formal referral and you send that out to your customers and say, you know, if you think we're doing a good job in referrers, we'll give you one month of your service for free. Then that allows you to then do that in conjunction with sandwich calls. 
And what's a sandwich coal, if you guys are asking? Well, I'm glad you asked. So what a sandwich coal is, is when you go out to see one of your customers or when one of your engineers goes out to see a customer, you just pop in next door to either side of them, hence the sandwich, and you say, we look after Carol. Carol thinks we're awesome. Um, just thought I'd drop in a card. If you need anything around phones or, or, or MSAs, give me a call, right? Now, if you then went and see, given Carol that formal referral program that's worth $1,500 if she does one, and then that next door neighbor pops in and says to Carol, what's, um, what's Delta like? You know, A, she's, if she's happy with your service, she'll refer you, and B, if she's going to get something out of it, she's more likely. So by tying those two together, formalizing it, sending that out to your customers, and then getting out and doing a little bit of grassroots banging on doors when, when we're all allowed outside, then that's a really powerful way, way to get leads in. And then the other one is how do you search for leads? And there's a couple of just basic tips that, that we work use all the time. So look for industry bodies online. And we'll talk about third hills in a second. But this is something that I really encourage businesses to look at is if you're doing, look at your business, look at, look at who, who you engage. And what you'll generally find is there'll be pockets of you know accountants or lawyers or engineers or whatever it is so look if, if you're doing that by either accident on purpose then looking to build that out you know talk to those industry bodies look at those for lists that you can call and explain what you're doing for them and how you can help help, help them as well you know really basic if you go into a building take a photo of the of the directory right and then use that again from that referral so you've got a person in that building Hi, I'm just giving you a quick call. We look after so-and-so. They think we're awesome. Thought I'd mention it to you as well. This is one that we, we used to do all the time, which is if you've got guys on the road, right? You've got engineers on the road for delivering stuff. We gamified it. We'd have a bit of fun. So, you know, the engineers or the reps or whoever it was, they'd take a photo of a business that's similar to a business we're dealing with and then throw it into the group chat. And you might want to give people... A, a, a referral for that, right? You might give them a bottle of wine or, or, or a voucher if that comes through to fruition, but it also builds camaraderie and a bit of teamwork, right? Everyone's pinging each other with pictures of different businesses and that feeds through to your hunters. And then one that I absolutely love, and I'll bring you in down about this about verticals. So two things that I love. One of them is, is, is dealing with verticals. Because if you, if you fix one business's problem, Chances are that vertical is going to have the same problems. Dan, what do you do? You do a bit of work around verticals. How, how does that work for you guys? Uh, yeah, well, the the um, client that I mentioned earlier, the uh, that works in disability, um, disabled uh, or support for disabled people, um, and they needed to be um, accessible and mobile in times of disaster. That was a really clear and obvious vertical for us to pursue. So um, we've brought on three in total now. I think in the um, in the support workers type uh, verticals. So we didn't just limit it to people with disability, uh, expanded that out to um, support workers. So, um, it, uh, you know, we, got, we actually have two with disability, but then there's another for, um, you know, troubled youth or, or um, yeah. domestic yeah. violence. You can go that way. They're, they're the same thing. They are the um, organisations that need to be accessible um, yeah. in times of disaster. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, it's, um, it's, it's really important. Like, and like I said, they're, they're having the same problems. So you already know the solution. And, it, and it's really good because generally what happens is, you know, if you think about it, if you're in, you know, you, you do managed services, you probably know all the other managed services in town and you've probably got <laughs> similar events. That's the same thing with all the other verticals, right? So if you are dealing with, you know, as you said, non-for-profits or whatever, and you say, and, and again, you've got a, you've got a formal um, referral program in place, and they don't mind you using the name, you ring up and go, hey, listen, we deal with this other business and we solve, you know, and, and we'll talk about cold calling, but, you know, very simple script is, you know, we deal with this particular business, a, a named business that you do. We solve these problems for them, right? This, 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 and this. I would love to come out and talk to you about how we did that for them. That's really engaging now. And, and, and you know, I'm going to get cold calling right next, but, but there's your script, right? The, the best cold calling scripts are short, punchy, and then and trying to get that appointment. And that's a really good one. It's someone they know, problems they have, you solve them for them, let's have a quick conversation. And then the other one about Google Maps, I love Google Maps for, you know, so if, if every now and again, one of you guys get a call from one of my, one of my um, 
from one of my people, they probably found you on Google Maps because it's a great way, right? If, if you think about how you work, you know, if you're in a, a city um, and, you know, again, you, what you worked out is we do pretty well with accountants and just jump on and go accountants Brisbane and boom, there's, there's a whole calling list, right? Of all businesses and you can go accountants in your suburb, accountants in the suburb beside you and start spreading out. Because then again, as a, from a conversation, if you then are tying in a vertical that, that, that they know, a business they might have heard of, and, and finally, um, you know, you're in a, a, a suburb close to them, then that really all puts familiarity, which is more likely will give you a chance to have a chat with them. So a couple of quick tips around cold calling. I know I'm getting close on time. Cold calling. A lot of people kind of get a bit nervous about it, and everyone's like, oh, it's not that bad. It, it's it, it's okay if you do it a few ways and you go with the right mindset. So the first thing I would say is block out time and be consistent. If you're gonna procrastinate, it will be during your call calling time, right? Everyone everyone finds a reason not to do it. So pick a time, avoid like a Monday or a Friday. Pick those times in the week, and, but just stay studious with it. Make it's like going to the gym. Make yourself do it. Prepare a list in advance. So have the people you're going to call so you know that hour you're going to do is good quality phone time. So again, you don't catch yourself procrastinating. Same thing. When people go, oh yeah, send me some info, which you know, you, sometimes you're grasping on for, a, for any sort of positivity in those calls. Don't stop and do that email then. Just leave them to the end and get them all out. It's all about quality time. Because what you'll find when you're cold calling, you'll get on a roll. So if you just get in the zone and can keep ringing, you'll, you'll start getting your rhythm. So leave all that work until the end. And then again, be prepared, have your script. And, and, and if anyone's interested in talking to me a little bit more about cold calling, love to have a conversation about that because we've done a bit of work on that. I can help with scripting and some ideas. So finally, I know we're right on time because I, I, I have a, an internet issue. So apologies for our delay. You know, Access Forum is, is a technology award winning. Uh, our methodology is partnering. So we want to help you guys sell. We only succeed when you guys do. You've got consultative salespeople at your fingertips who want to help you learn about the product and explain that to your customers. So everyone who was on the call right now, I thank you for your patience. My team, uh, the marketing team will now take a snapshot of that and every one of you will get a uh, Uber Eats out to the email that you registered with. So I wanna thank you very much for your time. Um, I also wanna thank Dan for coming on and giving his insight and knowledge. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, sure. I really do appreciate you giving me your wisdom. I mean, it's lovely to see a seller help other sellers in the industry. I think that's great. I think we all should do that. Um, so thank you very much, mate. Not a problem at all, pleasure. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to throw it up to open to any questions. I know we are tight, and if people need to jump off, I, I thank you for your time. You will get that voucher, and I hope that you found this uh, useful. But if there are any other questions, I will just throw this open now, and we'll just see if we've got anything going. Just give me one moment. My mouse to work. Sitting here talking about technology all afternoon. I can't get my mouse to work. That's not ideal, is it? <laughs> I don't know nothing seems to be there, so we'll just get a couple of moments and see if there's any ever in the q and A. I I think we might have just answered every single question we possibly could have had. Dan, which is just that good. Just that good. <laughs> never, never leave anything under doubt, right? Just answer all those questions in the, in the presentation. No, yeah, yeah. it doesn't seem like there is any. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to thank everyone for their time and uh, appreciate you uh, sticking with us for a few technical difficulties there on my internet, the joys of working from home. Um, again, Dan, thank you very much for your assistance. This video will be available for anyone if they want to see it more. If there's any of the slides or chats or you want to have a conversation about selling, please hit me up. would love to have that conversation with you anytime and stay tuned for more of these webinars as they come forward. Thanks everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks again, Dan, for your time. No problems. See you later. See you now.